Today, I'm going to show you how you can quickly build and run unique encounters for your gaming group using Blender. Yes, Blender. And honestly, even if you're not running an RPG, it's just fun to build maps. This is going to be a very simplified overview of the process. If you want a detailed tutorial on all the steps involved, let me know in the comments. Now, tabletop RPGs and Blender might seem like a niche combination, but hear me out, because I know there's some crossover here. Building encounter maps this way flexes all kinds of muscles. Environment design and staging, lighting skills, file organization, shot setup and camera manipulation, Population, it covers a lot. I actually got my start with 3D and Blender when I wanted to make maps for my D&D group. Molten Bolt actually started out as a Patreon platform where I sold animated maps for VTTs like Roll20 and Foundry. And now I'm going to show you how you can do that and run an encounter in Blender. Let's be clear though, we are going to be using Blender for the map and the movement only. You will need to rely on your RPG app or pen and paper for the actual game mechanics. As far as I know, there's no add-on for running an RPG in Blender. That would be insane though. That being said, this process is game system agnostic. It'll work with whatever game system you use whether that's D&D, &D, Pathfinder, Lancer, Rifts, or some other obscure GURPS thing that you enjoy. It's just a kick-ass map. It works for anything. The benefit of this method is that you can have top-down or isometric views, or even move the camera around in real time if you want, like this. You could also make a top-down map, lay your TV flat on its back so it's facing upwards, and put your minis on that and play that way. Doing any of these is guaranteed to provide a unique and memorable experience for your players, and you get to practice your 3D chops. That's pretty sweet. What do I need? Thing one, a second display. For this to work best, you'll want a second monitor or screen of some sort. This is because we can have two completely different views enabled in Blender at the same time. Your view will be the regular Blender interface, where you can manipulate things and sort through your collections as needed. The player view will be the other window with all the overlays and such turned off. You can, however, still do this with a single screen. It's just a little less cinematic that way. To set up a second window, all you need to do is navigate to Window, here, and select New Window. Thing two, a model library. You'll also want access to a model library where you can access models. This is what makes this process fast and fun. I've used the Sketchfab plugin because it's easy to find good quality CC0 models to populate your map. You can find the add-on linked in the description. And don't worry, I'll have a list at the end of the video with attributions to all of the amazing models I've used for these maps. Always check and respect the license. And one more thing, it's important when choosing your textures that you make sure they will render correctly in Eevee because we want the real-time shading. Eevee, okay? Making the map! Let's start by making a properly scaled base for our map. This part is essential for the map to feel real and it's quick and easy to do. First, we're going to add a plane that's 40 meters to a side. To do that, hit Shift A, go to Mesh, and add a plane. The default plane is 2 meters by 2 meters, so we need to scale it up by 20. To do that, select the plane, then hit S, followed by 2, 0, and then click on the viewport. Hit Ctrl A and select Scale to apply the scale of your plane. Next, we want to add a cube to our scene. The default cube is 2 meters by 2 meters by 2 meters, which is close enough to a 5 foot square to help us scale our map, since this is the volume that one of our players will occupy. Let's hit 1 on our numpad to go into front orthographic view, and move the cube up so that it's flat on the ground. Good. Next, we want to add a grid to help us track movement, so hit Shift A, go to Mesh, and select Grid. Open up the Grid dialog box in the bottom left, and set the grid divisions to 20 by 20, and set the scale to 40 meters. Now we have a grid that's the exact same dimensions as our plane, broken into roughly 5 foot divisions. Once that's done, go to the Modifiers tab, here, and add a wireframe modifier to the grid. Adjust the thickness to your taste. If you can't see your grid, just select it in the outliner, then hit G, Z, and move it up just a little bit so you can see it. And now for some fun. Let's go into Walk Navigation mode to get a sense of scale. I have it on my quick menu because I use it a lot, but you can get to Walk Navigation by going to View, Navigation, Walk Navigation. The controls are just like any FPS game, except space will zorp you to whatever you're looking at instead of jumping. You can hit Tab to enable gravity and walk around to get a sense of scale. You can also hold Shift to run. I recommend doing this throughout the map making process and especially once the map is complete because it's pretty awesome. Encounter design. Now that you have a properly scaled base, you want to block out your map. You can do this with basic shapes to start, like this. Jump in using your own assets, or use models from Sketchfab or whatever add-on you use to access models. One thing to note with imported models though, their scale will often be wildly different and many come in separate parts, which will look like this. To solve that problem, just hold shift and click on any part of the mesh, then hit Ctrl J to join the pieces of the imported mesh together. Now you can move them as normal as one single piece. And if the model is so big or so small that you can't see it, just hit period or full stop on your numpad and the camera will zoom to your model. And the next step is to go crazy. This part is super fun because this is where you really get to use your environment design and scene staging skills. You can also make use of Blender's built-in rock generator and wall factory by going to edit, preferences, add-ons, 
and searching for extra objects. Enable it to get access to the rock generator and the wall factory. Once the shape of your map is set, decide on the general lighting for your scene, as this will contribute massively to the mood of the map. Make sure you have EV set as the render engine, and enable scene world and scene lights here. Also, make the background black by going to the world properties tab, here, going to the color and dragging it to black. If you don't see it turn black, you have a transparency enabled, so go to render properties, scroll down to film, and turn off transparent. Now for the fun part, is your map sunlit or is it a dank foggy cave? Is it full of weird saturated magic colors or dull grim grays and browns? Experiment and develop those lighting skills. Texture your objects using whatever asset library you have. For the most part, you can just use cube projection for mapping textures since all we want is a decent looking scene for our players. Remember, this is just for fun and not at all for any sort of real world pipeline. And honestly, most players will just be happy with how cool the map looks. Once you have the general layout and feel of your map set, use your model library to populate your scene with whatever props feel appropriate. Then, populate the map with your players and some baddies. You can use models or tokens, whichever you prefer. In my case, I like to add a spotlight to each of the minis to add some drama, to make them feel more important, and to make them easier to track on screen while they're moving around. I've parented the miniatures to the spotlights so they move around together as well. And now that the stage is set, you can control events from your screen while your players look on in awe at the super cool encounter you've built for them. You can use the gizmo to move your figures horizontally, zoom in on players during their turn for added effect, and add cameras to the map for some special cinematic drama. How sweet is that? Each of these maps took between 15 and 20 minutes to throw together, so it's very, very fast. And for a DM who already spends a lot of time prepping, that's a pretty good solution, especially considering the result. And that's it. Now you know how to build and run an encounter for your RPG group in Blender. I hope this helps you and your friends enjoy some awesome game time together. And if you found this helpful or like the content, you know what to do. All my love to my patrons who make these videos possible, and a special thanks to the Deuces Club for always sticking around to the end of my videos. I'll be back soon with another one. Deuces.